Hmm. Now we're going to talk about what the message that they had today about conversations and about um, how many people are in a conversation. When you're talking to yourself, there are two people in a conversation. What you are saying and what you think about what you're saying. So there's two. There's the person that's speaking this and there's a person that is thinking about speaking it or thinking about what you're saying. So that's when you're speaking to yourself. Now, when you're speaking to somebody else, you have what you're saying. You have what you think you're saying, what you think about what you're saying. They have what you're saying, and then they have what you what they're thinking about what you're saying. Do you get that? So there's four people in this conversation, the person who's hearing and the person that's thinking about what they're hearing. Sometimes the person that's thinking about their, what they're hearing brings a lot to the table. This person in the past has lied to me, so I'm going to be very suspect about what they say to me. This person has said something terrible to me into the past, and so I'm going to view everything that they say to me as terrible. Something as simple as what a beautiful day. This person receiving and listening and thinking about it is going to say, oh, my goodness, a terrible day. You see, they're coming after me. But they can say what a beautiful day and they'll hear terrible. Do you understand? So when you are speaking to someone, try practicing this on yourself. You have what you're saying to yourself, because I speak aloud, Sally does. Uh, she speaks out loud all the time. But mostly when she's talking to us, that's how she got in the habit. That's pretty funny. Guys, shut up. <laughs> right. Good. So um, what, what, to get back on this train of thought. So here we are. We have this person that's speaking and the person that's thinking about what they're saying. And what they think is colored about their with their past experience. You know, like, I have to color this with my past experience about this. I can't just hear the truth. Like, for example, Jane about her worrying, everything she speaks to herself is colored with her past experience about things not always turning out properly and good. So she has to fear its future. Do you understand? So she colors her thoughts or her speaking out loud with this feeling of, I'm afraid. Now, we don't have any control what the other person is feeling and thinking about us. But when you have a disconnection of a conversation, it is about this person not being understood by this person. So generally, when, when somebody says, what, I don't understand, you talk louder. You say the same thing, only louder. How is this helping you to have a conversation? No, it is not helping you at all to have a conversation when this person doesn't understand what you're saying. So this person says it louder. And then this person is worried about understanding the meaning because they're bringing all this other understanding about this other person to the table. And this person is thinking, this person never understands me, so I have to yell at him all the time. So I say, stop. Get curious. And so next time you speak to someone and they don't understand, you stop and say, what about what I just said? Don't you understand? And if they say everything, then you question, is it everything that I just said a minute ago or everything that I've ever said? You see, start a dialogue, but start it in such a way that there's curiosity and not you miserable son of a bitch. I hate you so much overlaid over the top of it. Do you understand? Because you are projecting all of this on this person. So they're reflecting all of it back. And then they're projecting and you're reflecting and therefore communication goes in the potty. In this time where we're all close up and personal with every loved one on the planet, understand that every conversation has more than one person involved in it. Every conversation. So if you can step back in this conversation and not worry about being right and not worry about being heard, but simply worry about being understood, it'll take the pressure off. And how about the last thing? Just worry about the connection because that's really what love is. Love is true connection. It isn't sex. It isn't procreation. That's procreation, not love. It's connection. And that connection stimulates the chemical oxytocin in the human brain 
which we mistake for make uh, we make the mistake of love. We call that feeling love, but it is truly connection. It's energetic connection, heart to heart connection. Have you ever had a child? The first thing your body does when you see this child or hear this child's cry is release a big old dose of oxytocin, which in turn creates mammary glands to start working. It's been proven scientifically. They proved it on cows and horses and pigs and chicken. Everybody with mammary glands, they proved the oxytocin causes the milk to let down. But it also causes the mother not to kill the child. <laughs> it causes the heart connection. So that's all we're looking for in the conversation is a connection between A and B. So when you are having a conversation with your loved one, rather than trying to be right or be heard, let's go for understood. And that's all. And then take it a step further and try to understand them. Use your heart connection. Use the, oh, I forgot. I love this person. I do. I, I love this person. So I need to think that this person loves me back. And I will receive everything in this conversation with this area of love. And so um, with that respect, they said this one here needs to learn that as well with our loved ones, because we all are here together. And it has been a very, very long time that we've been here together, locked up in a house. And tempers flare. And people get tired of it. And that's what's going on. That's all. That's simply all. Breathe in, breathe out, and relax. And that's what they wanted to talk about. Remember, you love the person you're arguing with. Always remember that. Okay? Now, the energetic healing of today is about clearing. We're gonna be doing um, energetic clearing for everyone that is here and everyone that is um, accessed. So please sit in a quiet place, uh, relaxed, quiet. And we're going to do our counted breath. And the breath is in two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, they said that's good. You guys have been practicing. Your body already has a signal on that. That's very good. And remember, when you feel worried and you feel upset or you feel like you want to yell at your loved one, remember that breath works for this moment as well. Because when you breathe in, that slower breathing takes the blood pressure down. Are you telling me you want me to teach them how to stimulate oxytocin in their body artificially? It's not artificial, it's real. Oh, because the brain doesn't really know the difference between something actually happening and a memory of it happening. And this is true. Have you ever had a, a, a memory of something that frightens you or makes you sad? Do you feel afraid or start crying? Is that answer yes? That thing's not in front of you right now. Why are you feeling those things? Okay, good. So let us um, take this moment first to clear, and then we're going to stimulate some oxytocin, some connection. Good. So from above, I'd like you to pretend or imagine that there is an opening high, high above you, that you can feel almost a attraction high, high above you. And there, it's a, uh, just an opening, just an opening. And allow what you feel is attached to your body as a place to rise up. It's almost like there's a hole in your ceiling. There's a hole in heaven. There's a hole where things that are no longer required of you can become weightless and fly above you. You can feel flying above you, flying above you, good. Just breathe in, and as you exhale more, just, just falls off your body. It rises up. You're steaming almost with things that want to go. 
Ah, one more breath in and exhale. Ah, let it rise up. Just let it steam up. Let it steam up. Very good. And now, as you exhale, breathe in one more time. And one, two, three, drop the anchor down straight into the earth. It could be a metal core. It could be um, an anchor rope. It could be whatever. Just drop all the way deep into the core of the earth, that grounding rod that you need and often forget to have. Ah, ah, guys, that feels so much better. Oh my goodness. The tension is just released so much. Oh, wow, that is so much better. Now that you're feeling, more and more can go up, but you also have the solidity that you know, just whoo, right up. You have the solidness of the earth beneath you. Feel that strength of that grounding. Very good. Now close your eyes and breathe in and feel if there's any stitches or any places in you that don't want to allow that light and breath to come in. Is it your belly? Is it your shoulder blades, your uh, your neck, any part of your body, just where is it? <clears throat> Good. Breathe around it. Good. And just see it. Just see it for what it is. It's just a stuck place. It's just an is. And exhale. Now breathe in one more time. And remember a moment of tension that was recent or the first moment of tension that comes to your mind. Just remember that. And as you exhale, you say, I can't do anything about that. I'm going to let it go. Right or wrong, it matters not. And breathe in again. Right into that moment of tension. And as you exhale, I can't do anything about that. Right or wrong, it matters not. It is not now. I shall release all attachments to that moment. And if I feel still some sort of tension around that, like he should have never said that, this makes me angry. Understand that is simply your hurt child saying this makes me angry. So let's breathe in again. And say, darling, it's time to let that go, little girl. Remember, you love this person. And exhale. And then breathe in again. And say, I remember I love this person. And exhale. Very good. And now breathe in again. And I'm going to bring up a memory of of deep love with this person, how we first connected and exhale and bring up that memory and feel that memory, feel every aspect of that memory with that person of that deep love and connection you had in that moment, feel it deeply. Breathe in again. And as the light and love of that moment, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, make it fill you whole. Allow it to seep in every aspect of your body. Stretch your shoulders. Allow it into the back of your heart space. Allow it everywhere in your body and say, I remember this love. I remember this love. And if you don't have a love and connection with that person, then remember someone you do. Or the moment of childbirth where there is such a flush of love, you can't stand yourself. It's so wonderful. Just breathe in and exhale and remember a moment of love. And feel that moment of love so deeply that you almost have tears down your eyes. Feel it with such gratitude. Feel that love deeply. Be so deep in that moment of love.
fall deeper and deeper into that love. See if you can find a special door in your body to open up and allow even more love to flow in. And now they're saying, become aware of the areas of your body where the love is not filling, where it seems to vibrate at a slower rate. Could be at your neck right here. Feel a neck right here. So go to your neck and say, please, neck, show me the door to open up and allow the love in. Open up that door. If you feel tension in your belly, or in your shoulders. Just ask your body, please, show me the door to open up. In your mind's eye or in your knowingness, open up the door and allow that light, that vibration of love to come in. Take your time. Take your time with this. Every aspect where you feel tension, Gather more of that wonderful, wonderful feeling of connection, that wonderful light and love, and open the door and allow it to flow and fill that room. The vibration of love is the strongest and highest vibration our body can handle. There are higher vibrations, but our bodies don't like them. They're too high. It's too much. So fill your body with that vibration of, of love. And if that you feel it fading, conjure up another memory of deep love, of deep connection, being rocked and cuddled, or rocking and cuddling a child of your own. Here you go. Connect it deeply. Feel that love. Allow your body to float and flow in that love. And again, any place that doesn't feel like it's vibrating at the same rate, could it be your low back or your hips? Close your eyes and say, body, please show me the door so I may open it up and allow this vibration to enter. And relax, very good. And exhale. Please open the door and allow this love to vibrate through my whole body, through my whole light, through every aspect of my physical space. And now it's time to turn on the the knowingness of your perfection. And this is what we mean. It's time for you to notice what's great right now. Notice what's really great. Do you have a comfortable place to sit? Are you thankful that you have an internet connection and a safe home? Are you thankful that you're not alone? Or if you are alone, are you thankful that you are? Are you thankful that you have pets that you love, that the flowers are coming out, that it rained or it didn't rain, and that the sun shone? Are you thankful for many things? Find those things that you're thankful for. Stack them up, line them up. Notice all of these wonderful blessings that you have. Look for small ones. My small one is my hair hasn't fallen out yet. <laughs> There's so much of it now. And I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful that my hair is growing so I can cut it and give it away to people who need it. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I can move air that's clean in and out of my lungs and that these beautiful fish can entertain me just by simply, they cause me to feel peaceful and relaxed just by watching them. You can find some blessings too. 
We have so many wonderful gifts in our life. And what happens is we forget. We only focus on what's wrong instead of what's right. And so your assignment is to spend the next half hour thinking of all the things that are right in your life and then being grateful for them. Thank you so much. Until next time.